Okay, hello and welcome to this restorative yoga at the wall. Today you're going to need a space against the wall. You might want to put an extra blanket down on your yoga mat for extra comfort. Otherwise, you really don't need any props today besides the wall being the obvious one. So let's go ahead. The whole class is going to be at the wall. And it is going to have some focus on shoulders as well. So let's go ahead and set ourselves up against the wall. You might want an eye pillow, actually. You could put an eye pillow over your eyes for the whole class and just peek when you need to, if you need to. But most of you, if you've been practicing before, you probably won't even need to look at all for the whole class. So to get up against the wall is great just to bend your knees and put your hips right against the wall. And then you're going to swing your legs around get those legs at the wall if you have low back issues and it's going to bother you to have your legs up the wall for the whole time you can always have your bend your knees a little bit whenever you need to okay so look after yourself you're going to be in this first legs up the wall position for five minutes So let's just start by feeling the support, the support of the wall and the support of the earth underneath you. And you can let all tension drop down and into the earth. Take as much time as you need to, to find a comfortable position. And to let any, not just tension, but fatigue sink down and into the earth. Through the back of your pelvis, through the back of your ribs, your shoulders, the backs of your eyes your forehead, your brain. So as I shared with you in a previous class, I've been experiencing a frozen shoulder lately. And also um, just, you know, autumn season is a time to reflect on what is what beliefs and ideas are serving you and, you know, what things you might want to question and let go and how you can allow yourself to be transformed as well. And so one of the things that I'm questioning recently is how I'm practicing yoga or how the way that yoga gets practiced or certain styles get practiced and if it needs to be the way that it continues to be practiced or, or the way that, it, is it going to be the way that I continue to practice it or always practice it or can I try different things and see if it works? So one of the ways that I practice restorative yoga is to come into the pose and be completely still. And one of the things that I've noticed when I'm experiencing chronic pain is that stillness doesn't ser serve the chronic pain. That it actually supports me to move. And so I've been experimenting with moving in restorative poses. So you can check in and see okay, would that serve me or would it serve me better to be still here? 
And you, only you are going to know what's right for you. So you can check in and see, is stillness going to serve me the best here? Or would it serve me to try the movement that uh, Melissa is going to suggest here? So I am going to suggest that you might want to try just a very simple movement. And when I say moving, we're going to move slowly. Because in autumn season two, we're preparing to conserve our energy in winter. So we don't want to overexpend our energy because in winter there's no new food to be gathered. Um, all the crops are done. We've already gathered in the harvest. So we don't want to overexpend our energy. So we want to move slowly. Okay, so the movement here is a very simple movement. It's going to be inhale in the center, exhale, and roll your head to one side. It's just a simple neck release. Inhale, center, exhale, and roll your head to the other side. And just notice if this slow, intentional movement deepens your restoration and relaxation, or if it disrupts it. And only you will know the answer to that. And it, will, it quite likely will be different for some of us. It won't be the same answer for all of us. Okay, and then come back to center. Our next pose is going to be bound angle pose at the wall. So you're going to bend your knees and bring the soles of your feet together. Open your knees out to the side. And you're going to be here for five minutes as well. And again, you can stay here, check in and see if this position is really serving you. Or if you're experiencing pain in this position, as I am, if slow movement would serve you more. So the movement that I'm going to suggest is holding on to your elbows and creating some circles with your elbows to release your shoulders. So remember, the intention is for this class to be restorative. Now, just by having your legs up the wall, it is restorative. But also, that when we do restorative classes, we, our intention when we're in the pose is to find t tension and release it. So if there is, if we can release it by creating movement, then I think we're staying true to the intention of a restorative class. Moving with breath, if you're choosing movement. Keeping your attention with the ground and also letting the attention be towards the back of the head, the backs of the eyes. So the intention is not to increase flexibility here or mobility. The intention is to attend to pain in the body and to release uh, pain. And you can switch directions as well.
And for the last 30 seconds of this pose, you can just release the movement if you were in movement and pause and notice how that feels, if there's more spaciousness in the shoulders, if there's a, a release. And then you're going to bring your knees together. And bring your legs back up the wall. We're gonna have our legs back up the wall for another five minutes. And in, when you bring your legs back up the wall here, I just want you to pause here and notice, notice your relationship to the wall. Notice if ease is being created in the body. Notice your relationship to the ground. Notice your breathing. So we're just checking and seeing if there's more ease, more restoration. If your body is letting go into the ground, if your shoulders are releasing and letting go, if there's less gripping against pain, if you're in pain, And then if pain is present and it's difficult to be with pain, you may choose to bring movement in again. Or, but if stillness is feeling good, you can stay with stillness. And the movement I'm going to suggest is the movement we did at the beginning, which is where you inhale in the center, exhaling and rolling your head to the side. Inhaling and in the center, exhaling and rolling your head to the other side. And a, a little trick here too, if your head, if there's a lot of tension and your head feels like it's not rolling all the way, if it feels kind of stuck, you can actually pick up your head and lower it down and then it should release and roll more. So just notice also as we go through this class, the effects of having the legs up the wall is having on you. This is such a great pose to restore your energy. So if you come to this class and your energy is at a, you know, feeling like an empty gas tank, if you're feeling tired and wired when you arrive, just notice if that tiredness is starting to feel a little more, a little less. It's, you know, there are various images, you know, like a, a sponge that is dried out. It starts to feel like it's, the sponge is starting to get hydrated again. Sometimes when I'm feeling tired and wired, it feels kind of, um, it feels literally burned out. And then once I start to restore my energy, I start to feel a coolness. Not that I'm chilled, but like a coolness enter my body again. Like I'm adding coolant fluid, maybe to an empty coolant tank. It's kind of hard to describe, but I think maybe you know what I mean.
Okay, so our next pose, we're going to release our hips. So you can just pause in the center here for a moment and notice how it's feeling along the back of your neck, through your spine, and just notice if there's more energy flow through your body, which will feel good, will allow you to feel more restored as well. And then you'll take your left ankle, cross it over the top of your right thigh, and just bend your right knee enough until you feel sensation in the outside of your left leg and into your left glute. With restorative yoga, we're not going for really intense sensation, so you don't want to go for your super hardest edge. And you can just pause here. Notice how you're feeling. You might want to just stay here. You've already got a lot going on in your hips. And, you know, there's there's fascial lines that cross the hip shoulder uh, lines here. So it might be feeling just good here. That might be enough. If you want to add movement, you can bring your arms up. And you can do inhale, open, inhale, exhale, center, inhale, overhead, exhale, center. For me, I think because of this fascial line that crosses from the shoulder to the hip, it feels good just to be still. And so I'm going to rest in the stillness in this pose. So that's another thing that I want to invite in is that just because we make a decision at one point doesn't mean that we have to stay with it. Um, this is one thing I've been noticing is that an openness and a willingness to change when needed to attend to my own body and its needs as the needs arise. Here you can feel the tops of the arm bones in the shoulder joints and allow them to just sink down through those layers of muscles into the ground, into the earth, allowing the chest to broaden and open. So the longer I hold this pose, the more the shoulder for me is starting to become cranky. So I am going to open to some movement. I'm going to lift just that right shoulder where I have the pain and just, um, I'm just going to move it in the joint with some circles. It's a very small movement.
And then it's time to release this pose. So you're going to slowly transition out of this pose, bringing both legs up the wall again. Pausing here to feel the effects of this pose. And then you're going to cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh, open your right knee out to the side, slowly bend your left knee. And again, remembering this is a restorative class. So for me, my intention in this pose is more with the inversion than in the hip opening. So uh, my intention is to choose a very soft edge here. So I want to feel sensation here, but I want to recognize this is a pose that I'm going to be with for five minutes and choose a soft edge. and focus more on the restorative quality. And just check in and see how things are feeling. Is my energy feeling more restored? Am I feeling less burnt out? Do I have less of that kind of dried out sponge feeling? Am I feeling cooler? Do I have that cooling sensation in my body? As my body released and let go into the earth, am I feeling more centered and grounded? Am I feeling more energy flow on my body, less gripping and tensing in my body? And then just checking in and seeing what's needed here. Is stillness going to aid my restoration most? Or is there pain here that wants um, some movement to ease the the tension and pain. So the kind of movement that you might that you might want to invite in may be unique to you. If it's in the back of the neck, you might want to do some ten tigers moving roll moving through the forest, like fingers up through the back of your neck, if that's what's happening through you for you. And opening up the back of your neck. If it's in your shoulder, then you might want to bring some movement back into your shoulder. So for this one, I'm just going to make a steeple and do some gentle rotation in my shoulder because I'm getting some referral pain down my arms. So. So always checking in to see what's going to serve you the best because you are your own best guide, your own best teacher. Basically what I'm sharing with you is my process and what's working best for me so then you need to double check in with you and see 
what's going to work for you. Okay, so that's our time in this pose. We're going to come back to legs up the wall for five minutes. Remember, if this is causing you tension in your low back, you don't have to have your legs completely straight. You can bend your knees slightly. So do that check-in again. If your body's growing cooler, maybe that you cooled, that burnout is really going away and that cooling sensation is coming, coming in, you might need to put a blanket over top of yourself now at this point. If you're experiencing pain in your body and it's difficult to be still, then you want to listen to your body and invite movement into your body. So you might want to go back to the neck rolls if that was serving you or any of the other movements that I've suggested that have been working well for you. Opening up the back of the neck. You can even do... Um, if hips are more of an issue, you can even invite movement into your hips, like rotating from the heels here. Okay, so each one of us are going to have different things happening and going on in your body. And it may be that, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to experiment because it may be that creating movement in your hip joints creates relief in your shoulder joint too. So this is where one thing I've learned recently is that trying, you know, always doing things the same way, sometimes we don't get to discover new things. It's in not knowing and trying new things that sometimes we discover new things. So this was not something that I was going to try in this class, but actually in creating movement in my hip joints here, probably because of the anatomy lines, the, the fascial trains that run between the hips and the shoulders, it's created some relief for me in the shoulders. So see, happy surprise, happy mistake, happy experiment.
Remember, stillness is an absolutely acceptable choice here too. Whatever works best for you and your body, there's no right or wrong or better best. It's what's best for you. Everybody is different at different times in our lives too, in different circumstances. Okay, so just pause and notice here how that last legs up the wall affected you. I love how many legs up the wall I've snuck into this class. Okay, what we're going to do now is a recline twist at the wall. So bend your knees and you're going to walk your knees over to your right side first. So you're in a recline twist to the right here. You're going to be in this pose for five minutes. Okay, so because I've named this pose a frozen shoulder class, if you have frozen shoulder on your left side, this isn't going to work for you. So what I suggest you do is go as far as you can as is comfortable for you, like not at a super hard edge, just whatever works, and then take your frozen shoulder and just make very small circles with it. Okay, so you'll be in a smaller twist, which is completely fine. Do what you can. Okay, so for those of you who have frozen shoulder on your left side and are doing this class, that's what you're going to do in this twist. Mine's on my right side, so I'll be demonstrating it more on my right side, but that's what you're going to do. Because twists are impossible with frozen shoulder. If this twist feels too intense for you, you can always push away from the wall a bit so your hips aren't as close to the wall.
Okay, we're going to come back to the center. And you're going to pause here in the center with your knees bent. Just allow the spine to unravel for a few moments here. And then we're going to come into the twist on the other side. So you're going to walk your knees over to the left side. And so this is the side where um, it's really difficult for me to come into the twist. So it's more like you're lying on the side if you have frozen shoulder. And then it's just, you can be in less of a twist and be still. Or you can hold on to your shoulder with your hand and do some little circles here with your elbow. And they're probably going to be pretty small. And if you do have frozen shoulder, just be aware that we have been in this class for almost an hour and you don't want to overdo it because then, you know, you're going to be dealing with pain after the class too. So yes, we want to keep the joint moving, but in my experience of all the advice of people to keep the joint moving, that a lot of times they can have a lot of pain afterwards that can go on for days afterwards. So I want to remember to choose that appropriate edge for me and to not create too much pain in the movement, to listen to my body too. So this has been another important lesson for me to not hand my power over completely, right? To know that I know how my body's moving, that I know how my body's feeling, and I need to listen to that and pay attention to that the most.
Okay, very slowly you're going to make your way back up to legs up the wall. This final legs up the wall will be your Shavasana. So if you've, you know, actually worn out your stay in legs up the wall, you're like, I've had enough, you can always come down and do Shavasana. Instead, it's totally up to you. Remember, you're in charge. So you can lie on your back instead if you want. And if this is, you know, if your low back is feeling tender, you can always do it with a knee bend or you can do legs up a chair or your couch instead. You're going to have a nice five minute Shavasana here. So just notice how you're feeling for the difference from the beginning of the class to the end of the class in terms of your energy. And as I say, the, one of the main ways that I can tune into that for myself is um, in my head, that feeling of burning eyes is a, a telltale sign of tiredness, heavy head, burning eyes. Um, and just that feeling of, burnout in my body too. It literally feels like burning. So does, does my body feel cooler overall? Also, has the, te the layer of tension in my body been released? Do I feel more connected to the earth now? Is, is there less kind of grippingness, uh, gripping against reality right now? So do I feel more connected to the earth? Do I feel more of a flow of energy in my body? So does my head feel more connected to my body? Is there less of a disconnection between my head and my body, my legs and my torso? Is there more of a smooth energy flow between all of it? All? Is there less disconnect between my limbs and my torso, my head and my torso? So just do that check-in and notice if there's been a change for you since the beginning of the class. And I'm going to sit up and read you the poem I've chosen for you today. Okay, this poem is called The Swan by Rilke. This clumsy, living, this clumsy living that moves lumbering as if in ropes through what is not done reminds us of the awkward way the swan walks and to die which is the letting go of the ground we stand on and cling to every day is like the swan when he nervously lets himself down into the water, which receives him gaily and which flows joyfully under and after him, wave after wave. While the swan, unmoving and marvelously calm, is pleased to be carried each moment more fully grown, 
more like a king further and further on. So I want to acknowledge you for letting go of old ways of doing things and for being open to experiencing new ways of practicing yoga both on and off your mat. Okay, so bend your knees, roll to your side. You're gonna slowly, slowly come out of legs up the wall and find your way to seated. And then we're gonna come to a seated position and we'll gather the fruits of our practice into yourself first, and then we'll offer it out into the world. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. So give yourself a thumbs up for practicing this restorative yoga against the wall. And if you're not already subscribed, we'd love to have you subscribe if this style of teaching resonated with you. For lots more classes, we put out a class every single Friday. And um, put... I'm open to being clumsy before graceful in the comments. And if you're here live with us, then we will stick around and um, have some discussion afterwards. We'll, do, we'll take comments and questions and uh, we'll stick around for a few minutes here. Um, if you are listening on the recording, then I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean be, you'll be as rooted as the old growth trees in our forest, and may you be as strong as our mountains. Om Shanti. Namaste.